Ciao everyone, this is Daniele Luciano Mosco of Parola de More Ministries. Today, beloved children of God, I want to share on the subject of demons. That's right, demons. Now, in the Gospel book of Luke chapter 22, verses 3 and 4, it reads, Then entered Satan in Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how we might betray him, the Lord Jesus Christ, unto them. Now, demons know how powerful and destructive the thing called pride can be in helping to bring a person down. As the leader of all demons, Satan, Lucifer, the devil himself, is the number one demon who fell full of pride and arrogance from the kingdom of heaven. So, Satan, the devil, will do everything he can behind the scenes to try and build up a person's ego through false flattery and vain imaginations. Here is a list of some of the different kinds of demons who will try and bring someone down through the use of pride and arrogance. So, pride, arrogance, haughtiness, rebellion, blasphemy, control, domination, possessiveness, contention, quarrelling, critical, judgmental, selfish, narcissistic, unbelief, scepticism, greed, paranoia, deceit, mockery. They are all found in pride and arrogance. Now, once the spirit of pride enters into someone, either through demons and or through a person's own human spirit, many of the above qualities, negative qualities, will follow right along with it. Now, how many prideful people do you know who also exhibit additional negative qualities, such as being too judgmental and too critical of other people? Since their inflated sense of pride tells them they are always right and never wrong, then there is no room for anyone else who does not agree with them. As a result, they will become very judgmental and critical of anyone else who does not agree with them. As their pride continues to build up, they will then become more selfish and narcissistic, as all they will be able to see what is in their own little world. As a result, everything else in their lives will become totally irre irrelevant be because they are narcissistic, selfish, and they will not listen even to members of their own families or members of the body of Christ. They will then start to want more and more, especially in the area of power, wealth, authority, control, money and material goods. From there, a strong spirit of greed will start to enter into them. And before you know it, they will have lost all contact with God, their best friends and family members. They will then become an island and a God all to themselves. And then it happens. Everything comes tumbling down around them. They lose all of their friends, their families, their wealth and money. And most importantly of all, they lose their spiritual connection and personal relationship to God himself. Demons are always looking for an opening in your defences, a chink in your armour. If they see that you are battling any type of abnormal fear for any type of crisis you are going through, then they will then try and add to it so they can get you paralysed. And if you get paralysed enough, then you will stop trying to move forward. And if you stop trying to move forward, then you may end up handcuffing God in being able to work with you. This is why it is so important that you realise the types of games demons are capable of playing with you so you do not fall into their demonic traps. Unforgiveness, yes, unforgiveness. 
another major area that demons will try and target once they see this kind of an opening in your defences is in the area of unforgiveness. The reason they will try and target this specific area is due to the following Holy Bible verse found in the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 25. Then I read, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, demons will especially target this area, so they can sever the prayer line between you and the Lord. Your prayer line to the Lord is your lifeline, in accordance to the book of Jeremiah 33. 3. Call upon me and I will answer you, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, when you have that lifeline damaged, cut or severed in any way by unforgiveness, and all of the forward momentum in your calling with the Lord will completely shut down, until you can get it re-established again by sincere repentance and openly denouncing the spirit of unforgiveness. All these other negative demons operate under the main negative spirit of unforgiveness and can and will enter and stay in a person's mind simply because they have been given a legal right to remain because that person has not truly and sincerely forgiven from their heart the person who offended them. Negative spirits like bitterness, jealousy, resentment, anger, stubbornness, envy, hard-heartedness, malice, strife. Amen? God does not want us walking around with any type of heavy anchors and choking burdens wrapped around us and holding on to any type of major unforgiveness against anyone, for it will be a major heavy anchor wrapped around your soul until you can get it completely cut away from you by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can receive the supernatural power of true deliverance by sincere open confession in repentance to God and rejecting and denouncing these evil negative spirits that destroy so many people and their families. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray everyone listening to this message today will receive forgiveness of the lack of unforgiveness and pride. For pride goes before a fall. And Father, I pray Also, they will not be foolish because anger rests in the bosom of fools. Father, deliverance comes by openly denouncing and confessing that sin and rejecting it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You will never override your free will and you have given every man, woman and child a free will choice to choose ye therefore this day whom you will serve. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that every one will call upon your name, for whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus that you will destroy the spirit of lack of unforgiveness and pride and arrogance in our lives. I ask this in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the mighty Messiah, our Deliverer, our Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name I have prayed. Amen and amen and amen.